It's really important to remember who you are. And I really wanted to give 2021 my all and I think I maybe gave it a little bit too much welly. It's my biggest guilty pleasure, but I think I'm okay with it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Monroe Bergdorf. I'm going to be getting up close with Cosmo UK. I'm going to be answering some questions about my life, my career and everything in between. So let's get into it. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I think I'm most inspired by Gen Z and the younger generations. I feel like they have been given a really raw deal with what they've been born into, the chaos that we are navigating today. And the way that they organize, the way that they communicate, the way that they change narratives that we just took verbatim is so inspiring to me. And I often think that, you know, their resilience and their tenacity is often overlooked. So shout out to Gen Z. I don't really get sick of answering questions. I get sick of how my answers are framed sometimes. I could be talking about so many different things and somehow the smallest hint of me talking about my transition will always be the headline. I just feel like sometimes it's okay for trans people to be given opportunities and not just talk about being trans. I think it's really important that, you know, we get to talk about our talents, our loves, our, um, our joy, our, you know, inspirations, um, our passions, rather than just always talking about our gender identity. The advice I give to my younger self is probably just chill out a little bit. You know, not everything needs to be right now and to the nth degree. Moderation is a talent, hone it. The biggest thing that I've learned from my time in the public eye is how easy it is to lose yourself when people are projecting an idea of who they think you are onto you. It's very difficult not to absorb that so I just try to make sure that I take regular social media breaks. I don't read what people are saying about me on Twitter, what the newspapers are saying about me or what, you know, um, some blogs are saying. It's really important to remember who you are and to remember why you're doing what you're doing. The last time that I was starstruck, and probably the first time that I was starstruck was being in the same room as Naomi Campbell who is just the most phenomenal woman and an incredible inspirational force of nature. And I'm just always taken aback at how beautiful she is and you know, what a legend and an icon she is and how many doors she's opened for so many people. So I, I don't think I will ever not be starstruck by Naomi Campbell. What brings me joy? Definitely animals. I've always had a lot of pets around me and different kinds of animals around me. I grew up in a very secluded area, so lots of nature, not much to do. So they were really my friends um, in times when I didn't really have any. And I've got two cats and three dogs at the moment. But when I was a kid, I had like 15 animals and like crazy things like giant snails and giant millipedes and stick insects, praying mantises, that kind of thing. So yeah, animals bring me joy. My relationship with social media could definitely improve. I think that it's something that we all need to constantly monitor and make sure that it's a positive relationship rather than something that is causing us to look for validation when we should really be looking inwards. All of us could definitely be much more conscious about how we use social media in a general sense on a day-to-day -day basis. Ooh. Every single episode just feels like my favorite every time that I record it. And I know this is a very diplomatic answer, but I really can't pick one. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't pick one, I'm sorry. Pass. <laughs> So my book Transitional comes out next year. There's a lot in there that I've never shared before. I just want people to read it and not necessarily, you know, just see a different side of me, but maybe see a different side of themselves too and question things that they maybe just took as concrete and just realize that, you know, a lot more things in this world are actually fluid 
a lot more things in this world actually exist on a spectrum rather than the binary. A lot more things in this world aren't actually fixed. They, you know, change and they transition. So I really hope that the reader goes on the journey with themselves as well as learns a little bit more about me. I take care of my mental health. Probably not as good as I should. I think it's something that needs to be an ever evolving process and sometimes I definitely take my eye off the ball. I'm a workaholic. From being in lockdown for so long and then coming out of lockdown, I really wanted to give 2021 my all and I think I maybe gave it a little bit too much welly and ended up burning out completely just before Christmas. I want to enjoy life. I want to love and focus on my relationships and, you know, just connect with my body and prioritise pleasure rather than pounds. The advice that I would have for anyone struggling with their identity is remember that there's only one you and your identity doesn't actually need to fit a box or a label. You are you and rather than, you know, panicking about who or what you are, just focus on how you feel, focus on, you know, what you want for yourself. Yes, you may be gay, but what else? Yes, you may be trans, but what else? Yes, you may be bi, pan, lesbian, asexual, intersex, but what else? Focus on what you want for yourself and your identity will come. Just allow it to develop. We've seen so much change, it's incredible. I went to school and it was illegal to talk about being gay and to be raised in that environment, you know, that, that was trauma inducing and trauma that I am still recovering from today. And also people forget that, you know, the gay rights movement and the LGBTQ movement that was born out of the gay rights movement is only 50 years old. We are definitely seeing change happen in real time. There's people that are still alive that have seen all of this change unfold and we've got so far left to go. If anything, the trans rights movement is so far behind the gay rights movement. But everything that's happening to the trans community at the moment, at one point was happening to the gay community. And look how far the gay community has come. So that is in itself hope. All we need to do is focus on making sure that our community is solid, that we are there for each other, that we are educating each other and educating ourselves so that we can push forward in a positive and progressive way. I would say a really amazing book that everyone should read if they're looking to educate themselves further on um, the lives and um, the social climate of transgender people is a book called The Transgender Issue written by an incredible author and one of my friends called Shauna Faye and she has just written in my opinion a modern masterclass, masterpiece um, of literature. I stay true to myself by recognising that I am just one person. I can't do it all myself. Just be focused on the growth of you as a person rather than the perfection of you as a person. I think that that really allows me to stay true to myself and recognising that I am human so I am flawed and I'm not gonna get everything right. I'm not gonna live up to everyone's expectations but that's okay because I'm just me. My biggest guilty pleasure is definitely um, watching, binge watching actually, I can't just say watching the Real Housewives franchises. I cannot get enough. I'm fully addicted and invested in their drama, their lives. It's my biggest guilty pleasure, but I think I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's so wild to me to be the first transgender woman on the cover of Cosmopolitan UK ever in its 50 years of publishing. I'm incredibly honoured, you know, I read Cosmo when I was at high school <laughs> and to now think that I'm part of that legacy is, is amazing and I hope that it inspires other young people, trans and beyond, to achieve their dreams and to think big, dream big and achieve big. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.